Have you ever described a job you had as a nightmare? Maybe it was a crazy demanding boss, a nutty coworker, or just insane everything. If you've ever had a workplace where you had to say, you can't make this shit up on a daily basis, we want to hear about it. Anonymously, of course, on our new podcast, office horror stories each week we'll play back your calls read your stories and discuss the craziest most extreme and intense workplaces of all time but to do that we need your stories if you have a crazy workplace story in your past or maybe even present tell us about it anonymously just call toll free 1-833-HATE-JOB that's 833-HATE-JOB or write in your story on our website, officehorrorstories.com. We don't want your name. We don't want the name of the workplace. We just want your story. So you can go ahead and let it all out anonymously. Call toll-free 1-833-HATE-JOB. That's 1-833-HATE-JOB. Or write in your story on our website, officehorrorstories.com. That's officehorrorstories.com. Now you have an outlet to to share the craziness that is or was your office. Then stay tuned as we launch the new podcast, Office Horror Stories, this fall. Tell us your story now at officehorrorstories.com. Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, a listener recounts their haunting experiences and seeks answers. Also, time and space. Take a back seat to the laws of physics one night during a rainy car ride home. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead this is real ghost stories online that it is and 855-853-4802 the phone number to call in and share your real ghost story with us right on the website real ghost stories online.com and if you like the show support it keep it on the air become an epp an extra podcast person you sign up for that at ghostpodcast.com or if you prefer patreon patreon.com slash real ghost stories to uh, support us through that. Five bucks a month gets you access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, which are indeed commercial free. It's a nice little way to listen to the show and uh, other bonus content as well. Tony and Carol Hughes joining you once again. Hello, Carol. Hello, Tony. And how are you this fine day? You know, I'm I'm not too bad. No? No. Have you caught up on um, sleep? A little bit. Yeah. We, um, uh, as we're, I don't know when this airs exactly, but you <laughs> yeah. and I have just recently seen each other. Yes. Yeah, so I was just going to say this is airing, uh, several weeks after the, uh, event at the Crescent Hotel that we did. Uh, but, uh, for us, it was uh, two days ago. It was like two days ago. Yeah. Two days ago. So. And so I didn't bring home a ghost or anything with me, but what I did bring home, Tony, was like about 50 chigger bites all over my legs. <laughs> Damn Arkansas. There's no ghosts, but lots and lots of chiggers. Oh my God. It's been miserable. And if you've ever had a chigger bite, I think people know, like they itch just intensely and they're really hard to get rid of. The, qu- the question is, why were you making uh, lawn angels on the uh, the lawn of the <laughs> Crescent? That was kind of odd when I pulled up there and there's Carol. She's on the ground and she's like spreading back and forth. Like, what is she doing? Why is she doing that? She's going to get chiggers. And here we are. You know, it was just like in the moment. Yeah. It's like, who even thinks about chiggers when you're at the Crescent Hotel? It doesn't work in lawns either. You need snow for that. I so think I- it has something to do with a hike my sister and I did. <laughs> but she didn't get them. I'm like, I'm covered with them. What happened? I don't know. That is bizarre. But I do. I do want to say that I met a lot of really amazing people at the event. Mm-hmm. I want to say thank you for letting me be part of that because it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Well, thank you for coming. It was it was an awesome night uh, for all of us, and it, it was our first time doing a live show. Uh, so it was just it was awesome to have everybody together at it. 
and uh, having all the listeners that have come in from some that have listened from day one, some that are new and just everybody together. It really did. And I joked about it at the event saying uh, it really was group therapy for the paranormally affected. Very, very much so, yes. <laughs> and, but it was great. Everybody got along. It was just, it was, I don't know. I, I've never been in an event where uh, it was just kind of like everybody was old friends is what it felt like. Yeah. And uh, it was and great. Then after, Cause you did one episode of this and then you did a grave talks episode. Yep. And that was fascinating to hear the history of that hotel, the history of Eureka Springs, which is very interesting. And, and just like some of the ghosts that haunt that hotel, but it was just a really fun night. It really was. fun. It was very fun, and I think we'll start planning on doing uh, some more of those in the coming uh, year. Got to get a, get out the calendar and uh, look at some dates and locations and all that. And I, I know everybody's. I've gotten you know tons of emails over the years going, "Come here, come there." So got some areas we got to figure out logistics. We, uh, me and Jen have kids, so traveling is you know kind of one of those things, and being away is one of those things we have to consider. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of places we can get to within a you know five hour drive of here. And uh, I think we're going to. Well, have- I met, um, well, a lot of people, but there was a couple from Tennessee that they drove all the way and had to leave after the real ghost stories because they had to drive all through the night to get back home. Oh, my, they we're left like, that about night? Some dedication. Oh, my God. I didn't realize that. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. I would not advise <laughs> driving in the dark through the Ozarks. <laughs> that was- well, I know, right? I can't even do it during the daylight. Yeah. But I had gone on them unknowingly on a ghost tour the night before I took a ghost <laughs> tour of Eureka Springs. And then the next night we go to our deal. There they are. You know, hey, it, it, up? it was funny because Jen and me were walking around in town a little bit during the day. And Jen said, do you think we're going to be recognized? I'm like, I, I really don't know. Uh, I mean, if you're, well, follow us on Facebook and stuff, you know, they'll see what we look like. But um, there was a lot of people that we were walking around town. And I, I just, there were some folks who just kind of got the feeling, and I don't know why. I, I really am not profiling anything, but I just, I was like, I bet they're here for the ghost show. And there were several people that I thought that of, and I did not know that were in the audience. And it was like, huh, it's weird. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why I thought that. I it was just like, I just kind of got a feeling and I don't know. They were normal looking folks. It wasn't like they had like ghosts tattooed up and down their arms or something and looked like a mystic. It was just normal <laughs> folks. But, but it was just like, I don't I don't know why I feel this way, but I feel they might be. And uh, it was even at dinner. We had dinner and like the, the folks that were across of the booth across the restaurant from us were there for the I ghost know. show. And like, they were like, well, we didn't want to bother you at dinner. Yeah. Opposite <laughs> side of town, too. <laughs> But it was just, it was really fun, too, to be in a room with people who, sometimes I think when you talk about this sort of stuff, people think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, if you talk about some weird ghost experience you had, you tell the wrong person and they're like, yeah, whatever. But unless you, we've talked about this before, unless you experience it, you don't get it. Mm Mm-hmm. So to be in a room full of people who get it, that was pretty awesome. I think that's what really made it unique is everybody was there, uh, you know, with the understanding of we all got it. And there was there was no judging. There was no, oh, these people are kind of crazy. They're here to listen to ghost stories or they they believe they had a ghost. Or, like, no, everybody just we all had some weird stuff. And hey, let's hear about yours. And just, uh, it, it's rare to have a group of folks like that, I think, together in the same place. So, But hats off to you and Jenny for providing a community. Thanks. That people can 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 feel like that. So good job. Yeah, thank job you. Well done, it all kind of came together. And thank you guys for uh, being out there and coming in and uh, and wanting to spend. Uh, a lot of folks spent their whole weekend uh, in uh, town. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it was awesome. And I can't wait for our next one. So we'll make announcements on that in the coming uh, weeks and months and all that as we uh, we get some of that stuff lined up for uh, for 20. Jesus, 2020. Wow. Is that crazy? I know. But uh, I think probably no more events this year, I'm thinking. But uh, 2020, we'll probably uh, get some more lined up in there. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your stories with us. Let's jump over to our first letter of the day. It says, all events are true and all events happen at random times or on random days. My house is not haunted, but I may be. See what you think. What we have here then is kind of a list of 
what has occurred in uh, a bullet point order. Shadows always out of the corner of my eyes. There's something quickly darting away. I see the legs of an animal as it leaps away from my vision or the outline of a human turning the corner as we spotted. You're usually seen at my house, but I've also seen the shadow of a man at my new school. The school has just been built, meaning no deaths. They're not that uh, solid, but uh, half solid and half transparent as I've never been able to see the full outline of an animal or a person. It's not just shadow people. It's shadow animals, too. I think it's perhaps a cat or some sort of small furry animal. At a time, it was so bad that a friend and I were chatting over Skype when they paused and frowned as they squinted at something on the screen. Of course, I laughed and asked what that face was, for which they responded that there was something shadowy over my shoulder. I saw it too, describing to them what I saw, and then got a confirmation from the other person that I did not just see something. It was only over the camera connecting to my computer that I could see the shadowy figure. It was completely black, standing over my left shoulder, and the only other color was the two yellow orbs it had for eyes. Turn the computer more, my friend instructed me to do. The better at spotting things than I am, and as I turned the computer, they shook their head in disbelief. A person is lying across the couch, one sitting next to them, one standing by your window, and finally one on the steps. One by one, these figures left, and I watched as the one standing over my left shoulder slowly left from my sight. Recently, I was Skyping again with a different person, one who has had some paranormal experiences but has never seen a ghost before. They cut me off while talking and asked, whoa, what's behind you? I'd learned that there was sometimes this person standing over my left shoulder whenever I sat at the computer. I assume it's my brother who would be 18 today if he were still alive and told my friend that it was okay. They always stood over my left shoulder. No, this one is over your right shoulder, they told me. It looks like a black blob. About a minute later, it left, and my friend told me that probably it was something, that there was nothing there. I'm still wondering, though, if... There was. The knocking. Early in the morning, I was getting ready for school by straightening my hair. As I stood at the bathroom, I was listening to the TV in the room over that my dad was watching. It was rather hard to hear since the door to the bathroom was closed, so I was straining my ears to hear it. I jumped as my dad knocked on the bathroom door. Knowing he would knock again, I figured I'd save him some time by quickly setting down and straightening the opening to the door. Yes, I asked, and was greeted promptly by absolutely nothing. What did you say something? Was what my dad asked from his room. Yeah. Why did you knock on the bathroom door? I didn't. Then who did? I don't know. Being early in the morning, I dismissed what had happened and continued to get ready. And then the dreams. I wake up in the morning with a slight recollection of what I dreamt the night before, that I that and a name inside my head. This doesn't happen every day, only rarely, like once every two months. Later that day, I find out that the person I dreamt of has died, and that's in my dream makes sense. The person I dream about always says something to me before I wake up, but I'm clueless when it comes to figuring out what they mean. The person will smile, look happy, and say, continue doing what you're doing, I believe in you, and then I'll wake up with their smiling face and name imprinted in my mind. Then later I find out that they died. The story is different when a person I know has a child. I just dream of the mother holding something in her arms, and when I wake up, I have just their name imprinted into my mind. I'm not really sharing this to get tips on how to get rid of the dreams or how to enhance them. I'm sharing this to get your opinion on whether my ability to have these dreams is attracting things. Reading my previous story seems to show that I'm some sort of a magnet for the dead. Could these dreams be the reason why or not? There's a white smoke. Last year during school, I would see it all the time. At night at school and mostly in the morning, it would be out of the corner of my eye and I would see it slowly drifting upward until it disappeared. I could turn my eyes to look at it and would watch it fade away. There'd be no candles around and there'd be nothing around that could release smoke into the air. Each time I saw it, the smoke was white, just pure white and appeared out of nowhere. I have no idea what to make of all of this. What are your thoughts? Carol. I knew you were going to say that. Carol. Carol. Um, I've wondered that before. Like, okay, so... I think there are people that are more open to those spirits coming to, right? Like my sister. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sure. 
And I'm open to it. Not as much as she is, though, because I try to be shut down to it. But she has more experiences. But the dream thing, I do think that's where they can contact you. Mm -hmm. And so I do think it's all connected. What do you think? I think in many Tony? cases it can be connected. And by the way, I love the cricket sound effects that you have with you tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm in the basement of my house and it's that time of year. <laughs> I was hoping it was a little farther away. I was listening because I'm like, I, I don't remember there being crickets on my music that I play slightly in the background. <laughs> no, it's in my house. <laughs> Like, Damn, you can't find them. And then I take my People headphones off quick. Like you try to, but yeah. you can't. I'm like that's coming from Carol. That's awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Um, get some thunder. I have my own sound effects. Thunderstorm sound effects next week. I can't wait. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I think sometimes with dreams, uh, it, it can just be our minds playing. You know, just kind absolutely, of absolutely, absolutely. But if you're getting like weird messages, yeah. Like, you know, people die. That's a little different. Yeah. When, when it can be connected to reality, I don't think those are things that should be ignored. Uh, I, I'm a very anxious person. I can easily, uh, my, my dreams, uh, I, I don't even attempt to analyze them and I don't throw them out for analyzation because I really believe a lot of times my dreams make little to no sense and don't mean shit. Uh, I think most of the time it's 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 literally just this weird combination of random things that I have said on the air or seen during my day or worked on, and it all comes together. So we're talking everything from teaching my daughter to cook to making fun of Michael McDonald to, <laughs> uh, to you know, a debonic ghost story. And somehow, you know, if that was my day, you know, it may end up being that I'm on a ship with Celine Dion. And, it, and, it, and if I may throw this in... Um just for people wanting to know yeah. that you did produce a yacht rock <laughs> soundtrack to play during your live I did. Um, podcast. I so did. anyway, I did. And, and I, that did not go unnoticed by everybody there. No. And, and actually I have some, I have some interesting news about that in a moment. Um, okay. We, um, uh, so my, my dream, I could be on the ship with Celine Dion and we could be making raviolis uh, when suddenly Michael McDonald, the the demonic Michael McDonald, will <laughs> will have jumped onto the boat from a life raft and be chasing us, trying to kill us, um, while my daughter is laughing at. It. Like that could be my dream, and so that's when you kind of throw out there for like dream meanings and like what what does this mean? Absolutely nothing. It means nothing at all. It means some random shit has just all collided, and this is what you got. It's I it's, I, I think that. There, everybody has those dreams. Yeah. And I think that's what we normally have. But, you know, some people, and I'm one of them, have had one of those dreams that is like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Like, it's just different. And maybe that person's kind of like, I'm going to assume, like, I would never want to go to sleep if I would find out people are going to die in my sleep. Yeah. Like, that would, I don't want that ability. I know. Like, shut that shit down. <laughs> One of our listeners, uh, you're talking about Yacht Rock uh, earlier. Uh, one of our listeners is uh, higher up in the world of programming at uh, Sirius XM and uh, messaged me today. We're just talking radio stuff. <laughs> and, and I said, OK, I just want to throw this out there. I absolutely love Yacht Rock. Is there any way that can become a permanent channel? Because it's just a summer channel right now. Oh, it's not a permanent no, channel? It's, it's, as of us recording this, it is only a summer channel. And I just said, it's such a good channel. Can we? If you have like the super duper subscription or whatever, then with the extra ones, then you can get it. You can get it year round on the, the app. But um, for most of us who have older radios or what, you know, not the super advanced ones, uh, it's it's not there year round. Um, but I just expressed it. I'm like, we really should. That would be great if Yacht Rock could exist. And on top of that, you should be the guy going Yacht Rock Radio. I think if I just pitched it's my voice cheesy, down. cheesy, but you'd be really good at that. If I just pitched my voice down a little bit, it would be the exact same. I think that's all they do. I think it's just like probably like the janitor. They're like, we need a voice guy for this. Here, can we read this? And then you pitch it down <laughs> and it's like Yacht Rock voice guy. Perfect. I but, would love for you to be that guy. I love that. Because it would mean something to you. It would. It would totally mean something to me. We did. Uh, I shouldn't say anything more. Anyway, they're uh, 
uh, Nanny, I, I can't say anything because we just chatted about some ideas involving ghost stories and such and uh, that platform. But uh, anyway, uh, that, that's where that's at. But it's uh, it's I, I hope Yacht Rock survives and uh, and 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 is able to be smooth sailing for all of winter and fall, autumn, spring. It'd be wonderful. It would just. And if I can say one thing about that person's um, letter. That I do believe, as you well know, that I think you can have haunted experiences but not live in a haunted house. Yeah. And so he or she kind of referred to that at the beginning of that letter. And I do, th- I mean, I'm one of those people. Yep. So I think you can have stuff and not necessarily live in a haunted house. It's just stuff that happens to you sometimes. I completely agree. Uh, okay. 855-853-4802. Phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Call it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even in the middle of the night. If you're just like, damn, that was creepy and weird and I'm going to forget it, call. Share the dream. We'll air it. <laughs> And then we'll laugh at you hysterically tomorrow when you realize you fell back asleep midway through the call. I'm surprised no one's ever done that. You know, where they they I do get calls in the middle of the night, but sometimes I would be falling asleep when I'm trying to share a story. Anyway, uh, let's go to our next uh, letter. It says, so as uh, writing this, uh, this happened probably an hour ago. I'm heavily debating whether I'm crazy. So I literally just dropped my friend off at his house. I'm alone. It's raining. It's a busy part of the highway. So far, it's a typical Wednesday night for me. This happened around 8 p.m. And I'm like 80 percent sure I saw a ghost. So this white car was next to me and moving over into my lane going to hit me. So being a reasonable person, I sped ahead of him to avoid an accident. I look behind me in this white car on my uh, car's ass. I look away for not a, a second. It was a blink of an eye. Literally blink and look back at my mirror to see if this car had fallen behind or went back into its original lane. It did neither of those things. The car is now behind me. Six or seven car lengths back and a much smaller dark gray or black car. And there were cars in the lane next to me who were a fair distance behind and in front of me. This large, bright white car was gone. This was a highway, so the car couldn't have exited quickly because we were in the far left lane and the exits are all the way in the right lane. So I spent the next five minutes looking at all the cars around me. I saw a big red car, small dark gray cars, even a smaller white car, but not this big white SUV. It's gone. I admit I'm probably fairly crazy, but I'm trying to be skeptical. I ran any plausible scenario in my mind, but I can't think of any because as I mentioned, this car disappeared in literal time. It took me to blink 300 to 400 milliseconds. In any case, you're wondering, I kind of got a glimpse of a driver when pulling ahead of the car. Driver looked like he was straining to see because he was literally pressed as close to the wheel as possible. I'm trying to convince myself that I'm jumping to conclusions, but I couldn't find the car and it did not have time to get either far enough behind or ahead of me that I couldn't find the car. I want to say that the rain skewed my vision. But the bulk of the storm was over. It was a few droplets every now and then at this point. As much as I want to believe this story, and the thing is I do, I cannot help but feel like my mind is playing a trick on me. That sums up my story, and I just want to say thanks for making the podcast because I get bored at work and listening to the podcast makes a time go by a lot faster and the same songs repeatedly. If you can please try and uh, poke holes into my story because I believe it, but I just can't help but feel skeptical because a ghost car sounds cliche and stupid. What do you think? I think you had a ghost car. Carol? Well, I love the fact that it's like, it sounds cliche and stupid. Well, a lot of ghost stories do when you really think about it. Sure. But, I mean, I saw a ghost, but... Okay, so when something like that happens, because something kind of similar happened on our way to Eureka Springs. Oh. Like this car, it was middle of the day, car comes from nowhere, passes, a, you know, those windy Ozark roads, you might go, yeah. well, I, I drive like an old lady on them. But, you know, you're going like 45 mm-hmm. ops. We're on a, on a bridge with no shoulder action whatsoever. This car passed us on the bridge with another car coming. You don't forget any of that. Uh, When that stuff happens, 
you remember that. Yeah. So the first thing you do is like, what the hell? And you look for that car. So if it's coming towards you, the first thing you would do, like, holy shit. And you would look in your rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. You would look for that car. Like, it's just an instinct. Yep. And so I think that person would have seen that car. Like, it doesn't just disappear. There would have been evidence of that car. Yeah. Did your car disappear? Um, well, yeah, because there was a curb right, a curb the bridge. right there. <laughs> like, it scared the crap out of us. I pulled over immediately, and there was a motorcycle behind us. He pulled over immediately, too, and I told my sister, I said, probably because he wet himself, too. God. Yeah. But so, yeah, like when that happens, that's an intense feeling. Have I mentioned there's a large meth problem here in the Ozarks? <laughs> well, I kind of did see it firsthand when I was there. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things. That's the scariest thing when then there's people behind the wheel. Um, and I but think that car was it was the, it was a weird deal, too, because it but I know that was not a ghost car. Yeah, but. There is a motor because, you know, when you're driving like that, you're aware of everybody behind you and anybody who's coming. And the, like you have to really be paying attention when you're driving. So there's a motorcycle behind me and that car came from nowhere. So it must have been driving really fast. Yeah. And then it just decides to pass us on a bridge with a car coming. <laughs> God, I'm going to go into the water. Yeah. It's kind of like a fear of mine. Yeah. But, to me, the first thing you do is you look for that car. Mm -hmm. And if the car wasn't there, there's – I. how else do you explain it? I don't know. I mean, it's I, – I, you don't other than there's no explanation. It had to have been something. The one thing you could look at, maybe there was, uh, you know, something where you kind of look at the everything happens for a reason idea where – Maybe there was a reason it made you or this person speed up because had they not, maybe they would have been in an accident. Maybe it was something that was there to yeah. alter the path of that individual's car in a way to protect it, almost as a guardian thing. It turned out to be spooky as hell and weird, but maybe there was another reason for what happened that is being overlooked Just and we'll never know the answer to because that wasn't even picked up upon because of the weirdness of this car that literally disappeared. But they noticed that the, like, the driver's like, sitting way up there and mm -hmm. stuff. Like... So that's weird to me that you would notice a detail like that. Yeah. And then I, it disappears. You'd think it's like, oh, look at that. It's a man in a robe driving the car and he's glowing. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's not like some old man who barely can see over the wheel that shouldn't be behind the wheel. But I don't know. I mean, maybe it's uh, maybe it's somebody's grandpa that's now taken up uh, the the angel driving car thing. Yeah, I don't know. Cuz maybe there was a deer. You would and just you didn't see the deer. Yeah. Because the ghost car was there that made you hit your brakes and you missed the deer you never even saw. It, you know? Case solved. I mean, that's not really <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's a logical explanation. It's completitely logical. It's exactly what happened. <laughs> or an armadillo or something. That's the Okay, answer. it's an explanation. There but. you go. <laughs> 855-853-4802, the number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your experiences with us. Let's go to a caller and hear this ghost story. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, Tony and Jenny. This is Samantha from Southwest Florida. I recently found your podcast and I'm absolutely intrigued with it. It's very interesting. I'm very interested in the paranormal. However, after past experiences, choose not to go in first person um, and wanting to tell you a story that happened to me when I was around 17 years old we were hanging out with friends that had a family home that was still owned by the family however it was their grandparents house that had passed away we went into the house even though we weren't supposed to be there and a friend friend that family owned the house wanted to use a Ouija board which we all know is not a good idea my mother has always been I guess as most people call it sensitive and seemed to have passed it down to me so I led the board as we opened it 
and very quickly we got something on. When we got something on, um, it revealed itself to be bad. I wanted to close the board, and everybody else decided not to. And so from peer pressure, I decided to let it go. The person slash spirit slash whatever revealed itself to be an entity named Jim. Uh, When we started to talk to it, we went through the basic one, two, and three questions and answers. But during this entire experience, I felt a very nasty, cold feeling all down my back and arms and wanted to close the board. I verbalized this many times. Unfortunately, it took about 10, 15 minutes before anything actually led us to having to come anywhere near close to closing the board. Um, End of the day, somebody pulled up in the driveway in the house we were in. We weren't supposed to be in. Everybody jumped, leaving an open board with no hands on it. And I believe at that time, something crossed through it. That night we were in the house and my friend's boyfriend told us, you know, if you hear anything spooky, please let us know. Let me know. Wake me up. I will try and protect you. Whatever. Well, I had a dream that we were in that house and that something was roaming through it and then hovering above us. And then it focused in on me and tried to come into me. At that point, I woke up screaming. Nobody else woke up, not even the friend's boyfriend. Um, I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. I felt like something was watching me the entire night. It was a very terrible experience. So a couple nights passed, and I felt very odd through those days. And we wound up back at that same house, same entire party, the whole nine. And I was laying there on my side, talking to my friends, and my foot started to twitch. And not like a normal twitch, it was very odd. And it continued to do that, and then all of a sudden, I felt something very very quickly and ferociously penetrate my foot. And I felt something start moving up my leg. When it did, I leaned forward and my hand hit the ground and it was a shock, almost like static electricity times 100. And every natural instinct in me started to scream, no, 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 stop, it's trying to get into me. Everybody in the house got up and ran out the front door, and I followed, and whatever was happening stopped. And everybody was very confused. We got outside, and everybody was asking me what was going on, and I told them that I felt something trying to enter me, same as it happened in the dream. Well, while we were out there talking, we had an S10 Blazer, and we had a four-wheeler. And the four-wheeler, which was right next to the blazer, suddenly creaked and dropped down a couple inches as if something had sat on it. At that point, everybody loaded up into the blazer, terrified because there was nothing sitting on the back of that four-wheeler. We all took off, and we got out of an area that we call the ranchette. And I started to feel better. Now, I've always felt like there was something wrong with this particular subdivision, which is kind of horse property and whatnot. But I don't know a whole lot about the history about it. But every time we were in that subdivision, things were wrong. And in this part of Florida, there's a lot of redneck mudding and all of that. So at night, we go out in the blazer. And over the next few nights, I just kept feeling like there was always something with us and more specifically something with me. And one night as we were going through probably two, three days after the incident with the Ouija board, I saw a man in 1700s garb 
walking across the road and my friend drove through him on the four wheeler. And I knew immediately that that was who we had spoken to on the Ouija board. I freaked out and told everybody there's something very wrong and that I felt like this thing was attached to me. And as a child, I had had nightmares of something dark hovering over my left shoulder. And suddenly it felt very, very, very true. Um, over the next couple of weeks, I dealt with friends that were Wiccans and all sorts of different things. Everybody had a solution to my problem, but none that stuck. People that wanted to salt my windows and doors, but I felt more like they had locked something in with me than kept something out. Um, eventually, I will say that I had a friend and not a close friend, but a friend that really showed up and told me that I needed to realize that whatever this thing was needed me and it attached to me for a reason and that I needed to focus on my faith and myself and my strength and eventually me focusing in on that I was able to relieve myself of this problem I know that sounds strange but really having faith and realizing that nothing attaches to you unless it needs you made a very, very, very big difference. Um, I am now 38 years old. I have a daughter that is very young and I will make it every bit of my business to make sure that she does not ever, ever, ever cut near a Ouija board or anything else. Immediately after this whole incident, I had sleep paralysis for the first time. The sleep paralysis went on and on for close to six months. My mother, God bless her, having the abilities that she does, was able to help me to learn how to fight back in this sleep state. Because while sleep paralysis is supposed to be such and such, such technically, it felt more like whatever it was that we contacted that night on the wager board was trying to attack me. And each night as the sleep paralysis happened and it was every night, every time I tried to sleep, every time, time I just went to take a nap, this thing was there. And my mom taught me how to fight back and yell back at it. And the first time that I was able ever able to speak back at it, I was able to stop the sleep paralysis. And that's something that I think your listeners should really learn about because you have the ability inside of yourself to take control if there is in fact something else making this happen. So between rebuilding my faith and my strength in myself, and learning how to fight back, I was able to rid myself of this thing. And as I said, I have a young daughter that I will absolutely make sure is educated without scaring her, but will also know that it is absolutely not okay to ever touch a Ouija board. And for any of your listeners, I cannot explain the amount of terror that I went through for these months because it wasn't just what I've spoken of in this call. There was something with me all the time, and it was awful. And I thank God, just quite literally, that I am clear of this now, and it is for my faith and my prayer and my belief in God and His strength within me that I'm rid of it. Anyway, I do want to become an EPP. I'm hoping to be able to do that soon, um, hopefully within the next month. Actually, I'm hoping it'll be a birthday present for my boyfriend, which will be coming up very soon. And in the meantime, thank you so much for everything you do. I hope that you both have a wonderful night and a wonderful show. Thank you always for keeping me busy and keeping my mind occupied. Thank you for calling in and uh, sharing your story.
Uh, this episode brought to you by Milton Bradley's Ouija board, by the way. Pick up your Ouija board today and get... I'm kidding. No. It should be like brought to you by the anti-Ouija board. No kidding. I mean, I I, I understand. to invent that. I understand. If, if you went through that and it was triggered by a Ouija board, that, uh, yeah, th- that, that, that call right there. We should replay like every single first episode of Ouija Awareness Month because that's that's like just it's one of those public service announcement it is that and, I, and one thing about when you hear someone tell that story like you hear it in her voice mm-hmm. you know and like as soon as she starts off and the whole like right away she says Ouija board and I'm like no but you're a kid and you do those stupid things but like the whole thing, feeling it, trying to enter her, that is terrifying to me. Mm-hmm. It's terrifying. But at the same time, she was lucky in a way that her mother could connect and help her. Because most of us, you know, when you're a teenager, like the last person you're close to is your mother. Sure. Like my mom couldn't have helped me through anything in my teen years. But the fact that she was able to find someone who could help her. She was kind of lucky, really, in that regard. Um, but that's that's the kind of story that just terrifies me because that's so dark. And like I can't imagine, like she said, it followed her all the time. I bet it did. I agree. It, it's it's one of those things where it the door was opened and it did not get closed. And it's a story of. A Ouija board gone bad. When folks uh, try to tell the stories of, well, you know, if you do it this way or that way, it, it may be okay. Yeah, in some cases it may, but I don't think there's ever like a foolproof way of doing it where you're, you're going to guarantee that that shit could not go wrong. You know, there's there's always there's always a chance that, that something could go wrong, even if you have the best of intentions. I was just looking if here. You're young. You don't think about consequences. No. You're young. You don't think about any damn consequences. You're invincible. You know? I, I was looking at uh, Ouija board on uh, on Amazon. <laughs> and uh, uh, it gives it, it's, it's you know, distri- uh, whole description. But then my favorite part is where it gets to the customer question and answer section where people can leave questions and then other users can answer them. One of them is, does the planchette need batteries? The answer, the demonic spirits are the batteries. <laughs> How do you get it to stop levitating? The answer, <laughs> don't set the board on your lap while watching skin flicks. <laughs> <laughs> Will demons possess me? No, that costs extra. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's good times. Uh, now I'm just going to think of those things every time I think of a Ouija board. I'm not going to be scared. There's another... Th- for think a, about the skin flicks and the levitating <laughs> board. For a while, about a year or two ago, they were selling like a hot pink Ouija board that was targeted at little girls. And I don't see it on here. But that one had just a shitload of funny reviews. Uh, and it, uh, it was it was just so dry and dark. And I just found it hilarious. But I, mean, I don't see... Uh, maybe it got pulled, but it was... Uh, it was great. There's a Stranger Things Ouija board, like <laughs> themed after that. You can even get yourself a nice uh, wood carved one uh, from, you know, somebody made it. 129, 179 for that. Wow. There you go. That's um, what's out there. And uh, I've never watched the Ouija movie that was out a couple of years ago. I don't know if it was good or not. It just seems like a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm good. I don't need the Ouija board. <laughs> Uh, all right. See, well, any any story that I've ever heard on this show that involves a Ouija board, as soon as they bring up Ouija board, it's like, oh, this is going south. Yeah. There's it's never like, and then you know the sky opened up and the sun came out and the birds started chirping. It goes dark, really dark. Oh, Ouija Chris, Christmas ornament. It's like a planchette with all the letters on it that you can hang from your Christmas tree. That would be perfect. We just put up a Christmas tree today. You did not. Yes, I did. I'll text you a picture right now. Um, (laughs) For those people who are listening, may I tell them that we're recording this in August? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a fall tree. What we did, we uh, I'm sending it to you right now, Carol. Um, we, we put up the Christmas tree 
and I've always wanted to do this, and Jen said she's always wanted to do it too, uh, make it put like pumpkins and leaves and all that sort of, so we're even early on that, because it is still, it's still summer, um, but <laughs> we're excited for fall, so we made it a fall tree, and it's very, very festive for autumn and in those months, so we can keep the tree up longer and enjoy that, and then once Christmas time comes around, then we'll convert it over to a Christmas tree, um, but, well, uh, and for you, Christmas comes around on November the first. Uh yes, it does. You're exactly right. That is usually the day that this stuff starts. So we're only like a month or two ahead. <laughs> but hey, you get you get fallen, and it, and once it gets a little closer to Halloween, we can add some more spooky stuff to it. Right now, it's very tasteful. It's very, um, you know, it, it it's it's like what you'd see at a, a Cracker Barrel. That's you know, celebrating autumn. There's nothing spooky on it. It's just the, the autumn colors and such. Uh, but I'm just don't go put in any Ouija board decorations on it for Halloween. Whatever, they're they're like, children. Like 15 bucks a piece. I can't buy them in bulk. That'd be really expensive. If they were like, like a buck a piece, I'd buy like 50 of them. i <laughs> just put them all over. <laughs> I don't think that would go over very well. Jen, Jenny would love it. Yeah, I think I would be uh, I'd be sleeping at uh, one of the motels in town and then I'd have chiggers too because of uh, <laughs> uh, that's like probably bed bugs or You're something. You don't want them. You do not want exactly. the chiggers. Yeah, so. So. There you go. That's going to wrap up the program for today. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person an EPP. You sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Five bucks a month gets you access to all of the bonus material. Check it out there and help keep us on the air. Until next time, for Carol and Tony, thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.